Welcome, welcome, everybody, in here, out there, all the ships at sea. I'm your host, Stephen Colbert. Welcome to The Late Show. Yesterday, President Biden celebrated his 81st birthday. And he posted, sure, why not? He's the president of the United States. He posted a picture of himself with his cake and sweet balls of fire. <laughs> blow, Joe, blow for your life. Get out of there. <laughs> How did the Secret Service let that happen? <laughs> One person who took the time to mark Biden's birthday was Donald Trump, who chose to celebrate by releasing a letter from his physician that said Trump is in excellent physical and mental health. <laughs> well, no, I mean, well, sure. We all know Donald Trump is the picture of health, specifically the before picture. <laughs> while the doctor, while the doctor claimed Trump's body is humming right along, the letter contained no details to support his claims. Yes. <laughs> of course, because doctors rarely go into detail. I'm going to write you a prescription for... Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> now, enjoy your mystery pills. They're yellow. <laughs> is it lemon? Doctor also praised Trump's recent weight loss, which he credited to improved diet and continued daily physical exercise. <laughs> so, Ozempic. He's totally on. <laughs> he's totally on Ozempic. And uh, this, <laughs> he's a machine. He's a machine. Elsewhere in uh, Washington last week, Speaker Mike Johnson announced the release of 40,000 hours of January 6th footage. No, thanks. <laughs> if I want to see 40,000 hours of people attacking each other near the Capitol, I'll watch The Real Housewives of the Potomac. <laughs> Speaker Johnson released the footage because far-right conspiracy theorist believes it will prove that there was nothing to see on January 6th. They've already put out a lot of... I agree. <laughs> I think we all agree. And they've already put out a lot of misleading spin, with one noting cameras captured demonstrators peacefully marching through the halls of the Capitol <laughs> while police officers stood by. Well, of course, if you don't count the violent rioting, there was a lot of lovely footage. <laughs> it was like watching the Zapruder film and saying, wow, the weather was really nice. MAGA Republicans immediately used the footage to bolster their January 6th conspiracy theories. It started with Utah senator and mime being crushed by an invisible armoire. <laughs> Mike Lee. Last week, Lee uh, retweeted a theory about how this Capitol rider was really an undercover federal agent because he's holding a badge. Like you do when you're undercover. <laughs> Listen up, I suspect we got a rat in our mess. It's either Jimmy Two Shoes over there or Officer Johnson, badge number 425. <laughs> it's Jimmy. Kill him. Kill him. <laughs> stab with your badge. Stab with your badge. Badge stab. Here's the thing about that badge turns out it's not a badge, it's a vape. <laughs> Cops don't generally flash e cigs. Unless they're in my new vape-based buddy comedy sitcom, Blue Raz Lemonade and Storm Ice. <laughs> you have the right to remain alive with flavor. <laughs> Mike Lee is not the only Republican saying crazy stuff out there. He's joined by a Louisiana representative and guy who just found that plate of chili you left on his seat. <laughs> Clay Higgins. During a hearing with FBI Director Christopher Wray last week, Higgins, out of the blue, asked this. Are you familiar with... with you know what a ghost vehicle is? Director, you're director of the FBI, I certainly should. You know what a ghost bus is? A ghost bus? Ghost bus. I'm not sure I've used that term. Oh, oh, I have. When you're newly dead and you miss the train, <laughs> who are you gonna call? Ghostbusters! Thank you. <laughs> One rehearsal. One rehearsal. Woo! You're all in the union now. <laughs> <laughs> Higgins then explained what he thought a ghost bus was. It's a vehicle that's, that's used for <laughs> secret purposes. It's painted over. These two buses in the middle here, they were the first to arrive at Union Station on January 6th, 0500. I have all this evidence. I'm showing you a tip of this iceberg. Mr. Chairman. These two buses... Mr. Are Chairman. painted completely white. These buses are nefarious in nature and were filled with FBI informants dressed as Trump supporters. 
It could be. No, no, it could be. Or, or, follow me down the rabbit hole here. They were just white buses. <laughs> There's this thing called Occam's razor, which is what I use to cut my ears off when Clay Higgins speaks. <laughs> of course, not everyone's trying to put Trump back in power. We hear a lot of warnings from a large group of anti-Trump radicals. Uh, they're called people who have worked with him. <laughs> the Washington Post recently interviewed 16 former Trump aides, and they all had one message. He shouldn't be president. <laughs> That's a little bit of a red flag. <laughs> Pay attention. That's, a, that's eye catching. It's like a hinge profile that says, the funny thing about me is all my exes testified against me at the sentencing. <laughs> it's honest. One of the loudest critics out there is Trump's former chief of staff, John Kelly, seen here just as the chamomile hits. <laughs> Kelly recently posed a tough question. What's going on in the country that a single person thinks this guy would still be a good president when he's said the things he's said and done the things he's done? Yes! It's impossible to understand. Some people think he's disgusting. Some people love him. He's like cilantro that wants to put immigrants in camps. <laughs> Kelly, there you go. Yeah, we got there. We got there. We got there. Kelly was joined by former White House counsel Ty Cobb, who said this of Trump: "He has never cared about America, its citizens, its future, or anything but himself." And you can trust Ty Cobb's judgment because if you look at him, you can tell he knows who's naughty and who's nice. <laughs> That's what he actually looks. Like. He's getting out there. He's getting pretty far out there. Uh, of course, it's almost Thanksgiving. Hope you guys have a happy Thanksgiving. And uh, <laughs> the holidays come. We try to keep things light on the show, but we also do our best to reflect the national conversation. And in that spirit, we have to address some recent news that speaks to one concrete defining truth, regardless of your background, your political beliefs, or whatever god you pray to. Some bats seem to use their huge junk to have weird sex. <laughs> Now, now, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Steve, huge junk, weird sex? What's all this science mumbo jumbo? <laughs> this isn't an episode of Nova. <laughs> so let me, let, me, let me break it down for you guys. In a study that came out yesterday, researchers found that some bat species don't have penetrative sex. Oh, my God! <laughs> this changes something, probably. <laughs> <laughs> instead, instead of penetrative sex, these nocturnal hornballs engage in close contact kissing using their large penises like an arm during sex. <laughs> so they use their penises to check their texts? <laughs> How did researchers get the data? that led to this incredible breakthrough, they received an unsolicited email from a Dutch retiree <laughs> who had been recording bat sex in a church attic. <laughs> Amsterdam, Grandpa. Uh, wow. Uh, uh hey. Uh, uh, uh hey. <laughs> <laughs> what's, uh, what's P-Pop doing now that he doesn't work anymore? <laughs> oh, uh... Oh, he has his hobbies. Moving on. <laughs> oh, you know what that means. There's urgent breaking wildcat news. I'm, I'm getting word that a cougar was spotted in a public park in Oregon. Oh, my God. A public park in Oregon? That can only mean one thing. Cougars can play hacky sack. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes you just like the joke. Sometimes you just like the joke, and I'm sorry. I was unprofessional, but I enjoy the joke. For more, we turn to KGW, Oregon's news leader. New tonight, a warning in Tigard where there's been a cougar sighting at Cook Park. The city put out the alert tonight telling people to be aware of their surroundings and to keep their dogs on a leash. Of course, when a cougar's at large, you should also keep your sons on a leash. <laughs> now, wait, that other noise means there's an update on our wildcat news because apparently what everyone in Oregon thought was a cougar has turned out to be a house cat. <laughs> are very big. How'd they get that mixed up? 
One's a cold-hearted killer with no regard for human life, and the other one's a cougar. <laughs> now, maybe, maybe there's a little bit of a clue. Do we have this? In this actual footage of the creature captured by a brave local citizen, it's a bit grainy and distant. Let's see it again. Jim, enhance! But seriously, how did they think a little kitty cat was a wild cougar? Psychedelic mushrooms are now legal in Oregon. Got it. Got it. Okay, I understand. I understand. I didn't know that. I, 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 I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That also explains recent sightings of a pool of infinite light and understanding that turned out to be a squirrel. <laughs> we got a great show for you tonight. My guests are Bradley Cooper and Chef Jose Andres. But when we come back, I debut some brand new reality shows. Just stick around.